My friends, I welcome you here to St. George Church. My name is Father Paul Seaman. I'm pastor here. Thank you for joining us in prayer this morning. And so we begin our prayer in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all and with your spirit. Today we hear uh, the words of terrible loss that happens in the life of Job, one of the great Old Testament figures. We ask that God will bless us during our time of need. Lord Jesus, you were promised by all the prophets, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. Christ Jesus, you were conceived by the Holy Spirit, Christ have mercy, Christ have mercy. Lord Jesus, you were born of the Virgin Mary, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us all to everlasting life. Amen. And let us pray. O oh God, who manifests your almighty power above all by pardoning and showing mercy. Bestow your grace abundantly upon us and make those hastening to attain your promises heirs to the treasures of heaven. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Job. One day, when the angels of God came to present themselves before the Lord, Satan also came along with them. And the Lord said to Satan, Whence do you come? Then Satan answered the Lord and said, From roaming the earth and patrolling it. And the Lord said to Satan, Have you noticed my servant Job, and that there is no one like him on earth? blameless and upright, fearing God and avoiding evil? But Satan answered the Lord and said, Is it for nothing that Job is God-fearing? Have you not surrounded him and his family and all that he has with your protection? You have blessed the work of his hands, and his livestock are spread over the land. But now put forth your hand and touch anything he has, and surely he will blaspheme you to your face. And the Lord said to Satan, Behold, all that he has is in your power, only do not lay a hand on his person. So Satan went forth from the presence of the Lord. And so one day, while his sons and daughters were eating and drinking in the house of their eldest brother, a messenger came to Job and said, The oxen were plowing and the asses grazing beside them, and the Sabaeans carried them off in a raid. They put the herdsmen to the sword, and I alone have escaped to tell you. While he was yet speaking, another came and said, Lightning has fallen from heaven and struck the sheep and their shepherds and consumed them, and I alone have escaped to tell you. While he was yet speaking, another messenger came and said, The Chaldeans formed three columns, seized the camels, carried them off, and put those tending them to the sword, and I alone have escaped to tell you. And while he was yet speaking, another came and said, Your sons and daughters were eating and drinking wine in the house of their eldest brother, when suddenly a great wind came across the desert and smote the four corners of the house. It fell upon the young people, and they are dead. And I alone have escaped to tell you. Then Job began to tear his cloak and cut off his hair. He cast himself prostrate upon the ground and said, Naked I came forth from my mother's womb, and naked shall I go back again. The Lord gave, and the Lord has taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. In all this Job did not sin, nor did he say anything disrespectful of God. The word of the Lord, and thanks be to God. Incline your ear to me and hear my word. Incline your ear to me. And hear my word. Hear, O Lord, a just suit. Attend to my outcry. Hearken to my prayer from lips without deceit. Incline your ear to me and hear my word. From you, from you let my judgment come. Your eyes behold what is right. Though you test my heart, searching it in the night, though you try me with fire, 
you shall find no malice in me. Incline your ear to me and hear my word. I call upon you, for you will answer me, O God. Incline your ear to me, hear my word. Show your wondrous mercies, O Savior of those who flee from their foes to refuge at your right hand. Incline your ear to me and hear my word. Alleluia, 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 alleluia. The Son of Man came to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. Alleluia, alleluia. And the Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. An argument arose among the disciples about which of them was the greatest. Jesus realized the intention of their hearts and took a child and placed it by his side and said to them, Whoever receives this child in my name receives me, and whoever receives me receives the one who sent me. For the one who is least among all of you is the one who is the greatest. Then John said in reply, Master, we saw someone casting out demons in your name and we tried to prevent him because he does not follow in our company. Jesus said to him, Do not prevent him, for whoever is not against you is for you. The Gospel of the Lord. And praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Well, today's scriptures certainly give us a whole lot to reflect on. And most especially, I think, uh, certainly for my own reflection, is this reading from the book of Job. Now, it's more than likely that Job was not necessarily a historical character, but uh, a creation, a poetic creation, that uh, allows us to reflect on what it means to suffer in this life. Now, what we heard was only about 14 verses of a book that's 42 chapters. And so it sounds like Job has all these awful calamities happen. It sounds like it happened like in 15 minutes. All these terrible things went on. He lost everything in his life. And what does he say? Well, you know, the Lord gives and the Lord takes away. Easy come, easy go. Well, the next 42 chapters, it gets a little deeper into the conversation that he has with three very unhelpful friends and with God. And there are times when Job is really wrestling with this whole notion of what does it mean when bad things happen to good people? That is a question that we've all wrestled with at some point or another. When we know that life has dealt us a shorthand, when we know that we should have gotten better, when we know that we, we try to live a good life, and yet it seems like we sometimes have sorrowful things happening. We come to know suffering. When I was kind of a pious high school student, there was a movie that came out, now long forgotten, called Pete and Tilly, Walter Matthau and Carol Burnett. And so you're thinking it's a comedy. Well, it's about two married people and there's a lot of funny things that happen in it, but at one point in the movie, their son dies. And Carol Burnett, who always was just screaming at God in anger, saying some not very nice things, I remember being taken aback by this as a high school student. But now I suppose I understand what was happening there. And in a sense, what she was saying to God in that moment, in that prayer, is actually very biblical. Because as much as we can find the beauty and the majesty of the prayers that we're so familiar with, that we've been taught since we were children, the Our Father, the Hail Mary, the Glory Be, certainly the Act of Contrition, if we rely only on those prayers and never reveal to God what is within our hearts, that deep and true authentic feelings that we have, then I think we're missing something out in our relationship with God. There are many instances in the Bible, particularly if you look in uh, the book of Psalms, where the psalmist is just pouring out their heart with every human emotion that you can imagine. You'll find it in the Psalms. And these are prayers to God, whether it be sorrow, joy, anger, resentment, all kinds of things. So 
I think that the call that we hear from Job today and in the whole book, the whole 42 chapters, is a call to authenticity in our prayer. That when Job and the psalmist really kind of let God have it at some points, that that's permission for us. That we don't have to be all pious and holy in our relationship with God all the time. Because let's face it, there are times when we just get angry and hurt by what life deals us. And there's no one better to turn to than God with all of our true and authentic feelings. So let's offer our prayers and petitions that God will bless us, that our hearts may be open to his spirit and that the spirit may give us the words to express our feelings and our prayers to our loving God. We pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all those who are seeking God, who have lost their faith because of sorrows or grief or suffering in their life, that God may be their strength and their comfort. We pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all those who are suffering these days because of unemployment, underemployment, because of violence that happens in our streets and in some homes. We pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. We pray that for an end to violence uh, against the most vulnerable, against the unborn, the sick, the elderly, the disabled in body or mind, that they may be protected from harm and we may be their advocates. We pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for those who are sick at homes or in hospitals and we pray for those who have died that they may know the peace of Christ. We pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. And I ask that you please join me in prayer for a, a friend of mine, her mother uh, is in the hospital, uh, seriously ill with COVID-19. Pray for her and for all those who are suffering with this and all those who are caring for COVID patients. We pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. And for our mass intentions today, the poor souls in purgatory, we pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. God of all blessings, we turn to you and we offer you our truest selves. Help us, Lord, so that our prayers may always be true and authentic and from our hearts. For we know that you love us and we know that you will heal all our wounds. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for, you, for through your goodness we have received the bread and wine we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us our spiritual food and drink. And blessed be God forever. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be found acceptable to God, our loving Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at our hands for the praise and glory of God's name, for our good and the good of all God's holy church. Amen. O merciful God, grant that this our offering may find acceptance with you, and that through it the wellspring of all blessing may be laid open before us, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. It is our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For in goodness you created us, and when we were justly condemned, in mercy you redeemed us through Christ our Lord. Through him the angels praise your majesty, Dominions adore and powers tremble before you. Heaven and the virtues of heaven and the blessed seraphim worship together with exaltation. May our voices join with theirs in humble praise as we acclaim. Holy, holy, 
holy, Lord God of hosts. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, Jesus took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, Jesus took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of Jesus' death and glorious resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring us to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, Blaise, our Bishop, with priests, deacons, religious men and women, seminarians, and all who seek you with a sincere heart. Remember our brothers and sisters who have died in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, St. Joseph, her husband, with the Blessed Apostles, St. George, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever Amen. And so with all the prayers that we have in our hearts, we pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, and you say to each of us, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant us peace and unity in accordance with your will, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. May God's peace always be in your heart and your home, and fill your day with joy. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. My brothers and sisters, behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of our world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. And I invite you now to make a spiritual act of communion, asking that as I receive this communion on your behalf, 
that you may be joined to Christ in all things. Let us pray. O Lord, may this heavenly mystery restore us in mind and body, that we may be co-heirs in glory with Christ, to whose suffering we are united whenever we proclaim his death, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. And the Lord be with you and with your spirit. May Almighty God bless us all, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. My brothers and sisters, this Mass has ended. We go in peace. And thanks be to God. I hope that your day is filled with joy. The sun is not out today, so you have to be sunshine to someone else and let them be your sunshine as well. And may we all offer our prayers with an authentic heart. God bless.